All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in the house with Eden from Alliance Designs uh, and we're going to do a quick interview uh, slash chat and I really hope you guys enjoy this video. So also don't forget to subscribe and to like the video and if you have any comment, uh, feel free to express yourself in the comment section down below. So hi, Eden. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Fab. Thank you for the invite. Nice, nice. It's amazing to have you here. And um, I hope you're going to have a lot of fun uh, with this interview. So let me ask you, who are you? Uh, my name is Eden, and I'm the managing director of Alliance Designs. That's fantastic. So uh, let me ask you, uh, how uh, did you get involved? How you get into knives uh, in first place? How did I get into knives? Um, I mean, I've, I've always been drawn to knives ever since I was a kid, so I always bought knives, uh, collected them. But I think um, my first kind of, you know, I didn't really get serious about knives until probably about 2013, 2014. And um, it was social media, you know, um, uh, you know, custom knives just started showing up in my feed. I started getting, you know, more and more interested and... Uh, um, I remember my first custom knife was actually a Ray Laconico. Oh, that's great. And um, so tell us more about the origins of uh, Alliance Designs. How, how did uh, this uh, project uh, start? Um, it, it started um, really serendipitously. Um, you know, like I was saying, uh, I started collecting uh, customs probably around 2013, 2014. Um, and a lot of the stuff was uh, Ray Laconico's uh, custom knives. And so over time, you know, I, I ended up uh, building a friendship with Ray. And, you know, we'd talk on the phone, we'd chat on, on Facebook Messenger. And, um, you know, sometimes he would say that, uh, you know, he wanted to get um, into more and more production stuff. You know, uh, he wanted to get, spend more time doing design stuff. And that, uh, you know, he was always worried that if he wasn't in front of the grinder, that he wasn't making money. And so, um, you know, we, we toyed about with the idea of, uh, um, you know, doing some customs, or sorry, doing some production knives uh, for Ray. Okay, that's great. But how did actually Alliance Designs start in the first place? Um, Alliance Designs started, I guess, because I collected a lot of Ray's work and I had become uh, close friends, you know, um, with, with Ray and with a gentleman named Bill Simonoff. Um, Bill, at the time, was handling a lot of uh, Ray's, um, you know, um, auctions and, and, you know, first come, first serve sales. And so the people who've been collecting Ray for a long time would, would recognize the name. Um, and so uh, the three of us, we, we became really close friends and we were talking every day. And Ray would sometimes complain that, you know, if, you know, he, he's spending a lot of time in front of the grinder, and if he doesn't spend time in front of the grinder making these custom knives, that he wouldn't be making money. And so, you know, we kind of toyed with the idea of um, me doing um, or creating or prepping some of the material for him, and then we would create these mid -techs. Um, You know, at the time, I was working in Asia, uh, and so I had, you know, through my career, I had uh, experience with sales and marketing and distribution, uh, while at the same time, I also had, uh, you know, a background in, in uh, manufacturing with, you know, and dealing with Chinese factories. And so the first project was the, um, the Upside Down Jasmine Midtech. And so for that project, it was purely, um, you know, I would help him, he would provide the design and I would help him to prepare um, a lot of the material, you know, the handles, the blade, um, all of the uh, screws, accessories, bearings, etc. And then he would assemble and tune and finish um, making it uh, a, kind of like a custom mid-tech. And so that was really how Alliance started. Nice. Yeah. Um, at the time, um, you know, we, we weren't even sure what we were going to call the company. Um, we, we toyed with a lot of names. Initially, we thought that we were even going to call it Laconico Knives. Um, but, uh, but over time, um, Ray convinced uh, Bill and I that, you know, um, that wasn't the right path for us. 
And so, you know, Ray really was instrumental in guiding um, me and Bill in, in, you know, kind of creating a standalone production knife company. Um, and so, you know, kind of Alliance Designs was born. That's beautiful. Do you remember which year was that? Um, that was 2017. That's, that's great. Wow, you, you've come a long way and uh, for sure you, you're making some of the nicest uh, uh, production version knives uh, of iconic custom knives for sure, available today on the market. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. no, it's, uh, it's true. And um, so um, tell us more, like after you started uh, uh, the brand, the company, how, how did you get involved uh, with other uh, knife makers uh, to, to do other collaboration? What was the process uh, to actually, you know, achieve a pretty solid uh, uh, portfolio of uh, <laughs> custom knife makers uh, that are willing to, to, to uh, share their designs yeah. with you into a production version? Um, there was no strategy. Uh, I think at the time it was just because uh, a lot of the guys that we were working with were the people that Bill and I collected. These were the people that we respected, you know, people that we had started to create, you know, a, a, a relationship with um, through collecting and through the community. And so um, it just all happened very, very naturally. You know, um, you know, we work with guys like Matthew Christensen, uh, Walter Randolph, uh, Kevin Foster, Pat Hammond, Brian Efros. Um, there's definitely a few that I'm forgetting, so I apologize. But, uh, oh, like Ian Pekarski. Um, but, you know, these were all just people that, uh, that had designs that just spoke to us and, and you, know, you know, resonated with us. Mm, that's great. So how does usually work? Like you approach, do you approach them and tell them, uh, hey, I'm Alliance Designs and I love your knife, or uh, they approach you? How does it work? Um, I mean, I, it's, it's happened like both ways. Um, there's, no, there's no one fixed way that, that these, you know, collaborations uh, happen. So um, there's been instances where uh, people have approached us, but at the same time, I think most of the time it's actually me who um, approaches them and kind of, you know, um, you know, is, is, I wouldn't use the word begging, but it's, you know, we are very, very thankful for the relationships that we've been able to, to, to create with them. And um, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's, it's an honor to, to be working with a lot of these, you know, super talented uh, and, and just good people. That's beautiful. And uh, so, because uh, you made a lot of uh, models with a lot of makers, uh, but is there any, uh, between these, what would be the most successful uh, uh, design uh, or knife? If, is there, if, it's, uh, if there's one, uh, you know, that, that sold uh, much more compared to the others? Ooh, um, that's... So that's a tricky question in the sense that a lot of the guys or a lot of the knives that we make, they're actually exclusive in, in terms of the, uh, the volume that are produced. And so um, it's, I would say that it's, it's hard to judge which one is you know, the best selling because it's a limited number. Um, but I will say um, the one knife that has uh, surprised me the most was actually the one uh, that we designed in-house. So it was one of my designs. It's uh, actually called the Mini Slim Pickens. Um, I have one on me here. I, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's, a, uh, it's a button lock flipper. And uh, this one was the one that surprised us all. Uh, it's, it's kind of uh, gained a small following and um, we've done uh, one full restock now and uh, it continues to sell out continues to be popular. So we're very, very uh, grateful for that. And for a good reason, because that's a very good knife, no button stick, super smooth, great action. The acoustics of the one I tried are just unbelievable. It's a super fidgety knife, uh, very EDCable. Uh, it's, it's a great grind. I, I, I loved it. And um, uh, probably a question that uh, many people are wondering uh, about is, uh, how uh, are you able to achieve such a 
high level of quality and precision and fit and finish in your knives because they're actually that good. They are very good and they are almost challenging and in some cases surpassing the custom counterpart. So what's your secret? Thank you. Um, it's no secret, really. Um, I mean, all of our knives are manufactured in China. Um, and I guess the process has changed over the years. Um, you know, when we first started the company, um, we, you know, we didn't have as much uh, relationships or know-how know -how of the manufacturing process. And so we worked with Riot on several of the initial uh, production runs. Um, but, you know, since I was living in Asia, uh, I was able to visit a lot of the factories and I actually ended up building a really good relationship with David, uh, David uh, of Riot Knives. And so, you know, he kind of took me under his wing and he showed me, um, you know, kind of like a lot of the, this, the more specialized processes uh, that go into um, the manufacturing of a production knife. Um, I think what a lot of people, you know, the kind of misconception is that uh, there's a lot of, you know, single factories where a lot of the material goes in and then, you know, out the back door comes a finished product, right? But, you know, with modern manufacturing, um, even a lot of the major players, they're all outsourcing a lot of the manufacturing. So, for example, the heat treat, the wire EDM, um, the screws, all the little accessories, um, those are all done by very, very specialized companies, uh, specialized manufacturers um, in the area. And so, um, yeah, I think over time, uh, through, you know, David's guidance and through my own, you know, kind of like investigation and, and testing, um, I've been able to kind of put together, you know, what I would consider like Alliance's special, special sauce, you know, our own little um, proprietary manufacturing um, formula. And, you know, we have factories that we love to work with for certain things. And, um, you know, and, and it's just kind of been refined over time. That's awesome. And that's why uh, that translates into high quality knives, uh, in my opinion. Uh, also, I'm curious to know if there's uh, any specific step of the process of producing a knife from the design to the assembly uh, that is uh, more tricky or more time consuming or more uh, that needs uh, a lot of your attention, if, if there is any. Um, I think there's more than one. Um, but I would say, you know, the two uh, off the top of my head um, would probably be uh, one is the tuning of the knife, you know, the, the action. Um, because a lot of the times, uh, the person making the knife or tuning the knife um, is going to have different expectations than the person who's enjoying the knife. And so it's being able to communicate that with, you know, um, the manufacturers and, and the artisans that are making these knives in China. Because actually a lot of the, um, the assembly and the manufacturing process is all done by hand. Um, you know, everything from grinding the blades, finishing the blades... Um, and the actual tuning of the lock bar or, you know, designing the angle of, of the ramp on the blade. Um, all of these things um, take a lot more time and, and attention just to make sure that everything is right. And the, the final product is something that my target market will be able to appreciate. Um, I think another challenging area, the number two, um, is... Where, when it comes to quality assurance, quality control, um, and uh, materials. Because uh, a lot of the times we like to use more exotic materials, and exotic materials, um, sometimes being a little bit new, they're going to be hard to work with in the sense that, you know, machining them, um, you know, just failure rates. The second thing is making sure that the final product is perfect in our eyes uh, because you know there's times where we've worked with carbon fiber and you know it won't be until we get it assembled onto the blade where we'll find a lot of uh, voids in in the material and I mean like you know I find that a lot of knife guys we're, we're perfectionists we have OCD and we will not you know we won't stand for an imperfect product right and um, and so you know I think that's 
that attention to detail um, allows me to, to kind of, um, you know, set a very, very high bar and not accept anything less. That's, so That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, but. yes, you did. <laughs> and also, I'm curious to know, um, during the, the whole process uh, from, uh, uh, from the designing, really, to the assembly part, uh, uh, is there any uh, specific step that you particularly enjoy, that you are really satisfied uh, about? Like, uh, it could be, I don't know, like uh, seeing the knife... Uh, are done, uh, could be the prototyping, could be the meeting with the, the maker, if there's uh, any uh, really satisfactory uh, part of this uh, project. Oh, that you man. Have. Honestly, I think the most satisfying part of, you know, this whole project is when you see people, uh, you know, make a comment and they say, you know, the action is amazing, you know, the, the quality is amazing, we love what you're doing, and that just all makes it worthwhile, you know, because um, for me, it was, it was a big step to, to, you know, quit my day job and to pursue this full time, right? So, you know, Alliance Knives is my, it's my nine to five, it, it's what I do every day. That's and, amazing. Um, thank you. Yeah. And um, being, you know, and seeing that you're able to produce a product that people love, that people collect, you know, that people spend their hard-earned money um, on, um, I think that's, that's the real satisfying part. Awesome. And um, how, how much time it takes, like, uh, let's say from the moment you get in touch with a, a, a knife maker to the point where actually the production version of that custom knife hits the market? Okay. Um, I'm going to answer this question in two parts because of the situation that we're in now, because of COVID and supply chain issues, a lot of these, you know, these timeframes are out the window, right? But under normal circumstances, um, and I, this is also what I would tell to a prospective knife maker or designer, is generally speaking, um, I'll have a CAD design. Um, if they don't give me a CAD design, um, I will be able to provide them with a CAD design of their knife within about a month. Um, after that, after their approval, uh, we generally will be able to produce a prototype of, of the model uh, within about uh, a month and a half, two months. Uh, and then after the, pro the approval of that, uh, mass production will, will be about three, three and a half months. So all in all, I would say probably within six months, if everything goes well, um, from, from the start of our, you know, from beginning to, to market. That's awesome. Also, I'm curious to know if you have any, any anecdotes or any uh, particular events that happened or any, anything curious uh, from your experience in working with these uh, amazing custom knife makers. Oh, man. Um, I think the one thing that shocked me the most uh, after working with all of these guys is um, just the fact that so many of them are just such down to earth, you know, humble individuals. Um, because as a collector myself, you know, um, many times you would end up putting these guys up on a pedestal and, you know, you think, you know, they're, they're living in a different world than us, right? But, um, you know, after getting to know them, I, I've just, you know, been able to realize that these are just very, very nice people um, with a great heart and so much talent. Um, and so I think that's probably my main takeaway after working with so many of these, you know, great artisans. That's amazing. Also, I'm curious to know, and I'm sure you have some, uh, what are the perks of actually having a dream job? Because for many people, you have a dream job, especially for knife enthusiasts. Uh, I'm sure you have some perks to, that comes uh, together with this uh, fantastic job. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I, th I think the perk is that whenever we work with one of the uh, one of these custom knife makers, is that I always ask them for a custom prototype. And so um, I apologize to all the people on the books um, of some of the makers that we work with, but uh, generally speaking, they will provide. I do pay for the prototype, 
uh, so I don't get them free. But we do generally kind of get a priority and we do get a uh, prototype made for us. That I can totally see to be a pretty cool perk of uh, your job. And I'm actually jealous that you can have all these amazing prototypes from these uh, gods, <laughs> knives makers. Also, I'm curious to know if you can share, of course, um, do you have any um, uh, pro upcoming projects for Alliance Designs? Can you share uh, to us and the people watching uh, a little glimpse of the future? What is coming up next for you guys? Yeah, so in mid-December, we're actually going to be launching our restock of the mini Slim Pickens. And so that'll be the majority of our bolster versions. They'll be available at our retailers and on our own website. Um, shortly after that, probably in February of 2022, we're going to be uh, launching a brand new model, which is the Matthew Christensen Kraken. It's going to be a spear point thumb disc. And uh, this will also be our very, very first uh, thumb disc model. So we're super excited about that. Uh, another thing that's unique about this model is that we're going to be providing um, uh, customers with both a bearing and a washer. And so they'll be able to, you know, if they're washer people, they can just slip in the washer. If they're bearing people, they can keep the bearings in. So that's something new that we're also doing for that particular model. Um, and then after that, probably closer to the middle of 2022, uh, we're going to be doing the, uh, the Easy E 2.0. And so it's going to be the same, you know, Easy E that everybody's, you know, come, has come to, to love, uh, but with certain improvements. And so uh, I'll, I'll tease you guys a little bit more on, on Instagram, but uh, it, it, you know, expect a new and improved Easy E. Oh, that's actually great. I'm looking forward to that one. And um, one last thing uh, for you guys watching. Uh, Eden came here with a surprise and uh, we are actually doing a giveaway. This is actually a secret giveaway only for people watching till the end of this amazing interview. He has a beautiful knife uh, uh, that he's going to uh, offer to the channel and to um, whoever is going to be drawn by just leaving a comment down below, uh, subscribing to Fablades and following Alliance Designs and uh, Fablades on Instagram. Uh, you're going to get the chance to win this pretty cool uh, knife that he's showing to you right now. So for the giveaway, um, it's going to be the Upside Down Jasmine designed by Ray Laconico. This was uh, the very, very first, uh, I guess you could say, uh, mid-tech that was produced. However, this is the production version of it. And so uh, it's the flat and tumbled variant and uh, machine satin blade and a great action. So this will be the knife. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Eden, very much uh, for your generosity, for your time. It was really fun having you over here and uh, looking forward to what's coming up uh, from Alliance Designs for sure. You guys stay tuned. I really hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching. Thank you.